Okay, so for fall 2020, new lineup of animes. We have a bunch of cool new shows, some remakes of old shows, some continuations of certain series. And yeah, let's get into it. Before I start, I kind of want to go rank the animes from bottom to top, just to have a basis of my overall opinions on the season. So yeah, here we go. At 11, we have The Irregular at Magic High School. At 10, we have Our Last Crusade. At 9, we have Dan Machi Season 3. At 8, we have Yasahime, Half Demon Princess. At 7, we have Haikyuu to the top uh, second season. At 6, we have Noblesse. At 5, we have Tony Kaku, Over the Moon for You. At 4, we have Sports Climbing Girls. At 3, we have The Wandering Witch. At 2, we have Jujutsu Kaisen. And at 1, we have Higurashi, When They Cry. Okay, so for Higurashi, When They Cry, episodes 1 and 2. So this anime is a horror anime that's a remake of a 2006 anime that's based on a video game series. So yeah, I'm very excited to watch it because just I think Halloween, October, fall, just perfect time to watch this spooky type of animes. And this anime did a good job. So we start off with some spooky introduction with the schoolboy just bashing the heads in of these anime girls in some dark house. And then that seems like a preview of things to come because then we, um, I guess, go back into the present time where we see a guy, Keiichi. He seems to be our main character, transfer student. And then, yeah, he's in this um, new small town living his life. He has a main cast of girls with him, his friend group, which consists of these kind of anime girls with funny quirks. The main cast consists of a girl with green hair, Mion, a girl with blonde hair, Sotoko, and Sotoko is all, she ends all her sentences with gozaimasu, uh, she's like an Ojo-sama type of girl. Then there's some blue-haired girl, Rika, she's kind of a cute girl, she ends all her sentences with Desu, and when she hits you with like these one-liners, she laughs at you like, Nippon! <laughs> she makes some, some laugh like that. And then Reyna is, seems to be the main girl. She has orange hair. And her talking quirk is she repeats the last word of her sentence uh, occasionally. And um, yeah, they're all hanging out at school. And then Keiichi and Reyna hang out at this um, dumpster looking place. It looks like a junkyard. It, it's actually an abandoned dam that was supposed to be built. And then we see this guy. He's a photographer. And he seems to give Keiichi some background where he's like, Oh, some suspicious stuff happened. This guy lost his arm here. And then Keiji kind of all confused, like, damn, murders happen here? But then um, Rena, he talks to Rena about it. She gets all creepy. She's like, Shiranai? And some creepy, an like, her cute anime face turned into this detailed, creepy anime uh, face. So she's all this this creepy-looking girl for, for, like, half a second. It was, it was so well done. After all this creepiness is being built up, um, Keiichi... He also brings it up with the green-haired girl, Mion, and she also says, um, she gives him the background information that the townspeople fought for the dam to be stopped, but no, nothing violent happened. So then, after that, Akechi comes back to the junkyard, the uh, abandoned dam junkyard place, and then he finds a magazine stack. He reads it, and the first magazine tells him that a bunch of dudes have been murdered here, like hanged, lynched, whatever. So these townspeople actually murdered people to stop the dam from being built that would like flood their village. We end this episode with Rena just appearing behind him, cold ass anime girl, dead killer eyes, and a machete. And then behind Rena is also the blue haired girl Rika, and she has some possessed eyes. And then the next episode, we see uh, the blue-haired girl, Rika, goes to this spiritual world. It seems to be like a middle ground between life and death or something like that. And then it, we get some sprinkling of time manipulation. Like, everyone in this village seems to be living this uh, situation over and over again. So I assume there's like a bad end. And if the bad end keeps happening, which is probably Keiichi murdering every girl, like we saw in the beginning then the world will reset something like that so then yeah we go to school um have some fun school activities they play tag all the girls and keiichi 
Keiichi and Rena go back to the the junkyard to rescue the Colonel Sanders statue that they were looking for for some reason. Yeah, and then Keiichi was swinging his, his machete at the wooden planks to kind of free the statue. And then they both seem to have a flashback moment to... Wait, didn't I do this with a baseball bat? Didn't I smash your head in before? So it seems to be like a Groundhog Day type of simulation thing where they're just repeating these circumstances. So yeah, that's pretty creepy. And then we end the episode at the Watanagashi Festival. Uh, Rika, the blue-haired girl, is dancing, doing her ceremonial farming dance. And then, I, I don't know, the camera, the photographer dude, seems to know some shit. He seems to be a spy or a double agent. So, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Also, the OP and ED are really good. It's a banger, the OP. And then the ED, the ending, it, it really reveals a lot. Um, with these girls' backstories, I think we see the the cute girl, Rena, the main girl. Her father seems to be an alcoholic or something. So there's, there's a bunch of story points just from the ending right there. So I really love this anime. I, I hope for more thrilling, suspenseful, murdering, cold anime girls. Okay, so for Jujutsu Kaisen, episodes 1 and 2. This is a brand new Shonen Jump anime. It um, has a lot of hype behind it. And yeah, the main character is pretty interesting as a shonen main character. So yeah, I'm excited to see how this show unfolds. So episode one, we see the main character, Yuji. And he's he's a pretty strong dude. He has a uh, like Captain America level strength where he has enhanced speed and strength. But he's not like super, super strong. He's just like, uh, like a little enhanced. So then, yeah, his parents aren't there and his grandfather's in the hospital. And he's like, really, he loves his grandfather. And yeah, so it's a high school type of setting so far. We have his grandfather dying later. It's kind of sad, but then his grandfather gives him like a motivational speech where he says, Oh, you're strong, Yuji. Use your power to help others. So that's his shonen motivation so far. So, uh, yeah, Yuji listens to this. It's all sad, starts crying. And then the occult club in school, he's also part of it. They have this finger, this uh, cursed object, that they were going to investigate. So, yeah, now we have supernatural undertones coming on. So then, Yuji gets visited by this guy, Megumi. He's like a magic user, and he tells Yuji about, oh, the, there are cursed objects in the world, there are curses. And they are curses and demons, basically. So... Yeah, it's, it's his job to eliminate them. The thing is, uh, he doesn't have the finger. The occult club has the finger in school, so... They they all go to school together to rescue the occult club members because they're attacked by this huge, like, slime demon. Megumi has a sick power where he has two shadow hounds, and then he just summons them to just kill all the demons. And then Yuji comes in and just uh, also helps out, just punches demons and everything. So he's he's pretty strong himself. But then uh, shit goes south, and then Yuji actually eats the finger to <laughs> avoid giving it to the monster. And now he has a demon inside of him. The thing is, he can control the demon pretty easily. So yeah, Yuji is a pretty strong main character. He's very funny, charismatic. Just swallows the finger and gains the steam demonic power. So yeah, episode 2 comes in, and we have a new character. His name is Satoru. Satoru, he has white hair, he's a pretty strong guy. He's stronger than um, Yuji and is like demon with his demon powers, so he's a pretty big player in this anime. And then we realize that he's part of this um, magic academy that investigates cursed objects and gets rid of them to help people. The thing is, these fingers are kind of indestructible, and Yuji kind of swallowed it, so the only option is to kill Yuji. They had an idea, since there's 20 fingers, they belong to this old dude that was undead and became some evil demon. And he was like a god of demons or something. So then they were thinking, hey, let's have Yuji swallow all 20 fingers. And we can kill Yuji when he's done. And the, then we get rid of all the fingers, everything is happy. So Yuji is given an ultimatum where, oh, he could die now. Or you could eat the fingers and, and then get killed. Yuji wants to help people, so he thinks this is a great way to save others. He can't just stand by. 
while people are dying. So he goes to Tokyo to go to their um, magical academy. He gets grilled by like this headmaster type of guy. I don't know if he's headmaster or principal, but uh, he starts fighting with these cursed dolls that are like stuffed animals. And then Yuji convinces him that he wants to save people. Even though his grandpa gave him that motivation, he wants to do it himself. And he can't just stand by. So then, yeah, that's a cool setup for the next episode where, yeah, Yuji's finally in this academy. And he's gonna collect all 20 fingers throughout the season, probably. And then uh, more cursed shit, fight demons, and everything. This anime really lives up to action, uh, great shonen content, and unique characters. Also, next episode, we see a preview of a girl that'll join the cast. And yeah, her, she seems to have, like, these long metal sticks as her fighting weapon so yeah we'll see okay now for the wandering witch wow this anime is a good slice of life where there's like lessons learned so much character development being formed they're making the story really interesting for just a random slice of life show so we start off with a girl elena she's pretty gifted and smart and she wants to be a witch when she grows up so then yeah she graduates the which the magic academy she's like the youngest girl to graduate at 14 so she becomes an apprentice witch and to become a fully fledged witch you have to train under a, a real witch and they'll promote you whenever they feel you're ready so yeah she um tries to go around the town to find someone to train with but none of the witches want to train with her mainly because i think they're just jealous that she's so young so then she finds this stardust witch or she hears rumors from her parents that there's a witch just chilling on the forest. So then Elena goes to the forest to try to ask her. And then the Stardust witch seems to be very aloof, like playing with butterflies, just like carefree. So then, yeah, she agrees to train Elena. So the training is very rough because it's just one month of doing chores. Elena gets to do nothing, no magical gifts she's just cooking cleaning just being kind of like a servant to the stardust witch so then she just becomes fed up but still hangs on because she, she wants to be a real witch so she'll she'll handle all the abuse like in in the end like it'll achieve her end goal so then at the end of the month when the stardust witch sees that elena has like is actually really angry she um challenges her to a duel and then she just goes on, like, she goes to town on her, just beats her with all these magical spells, cutting her with wind, throwing rocks at her and shit. Like, she didn't have a chance. So now she's at such a low point, she starts crying. And then the Stardust Witch kind of doesn't know what to do. She's all confused. And this is because we find out the Stardust Witch was paid by Elena's parents to, like, make her, like, feel down. Like, because... Elena has been so successful in life, like she's so gifted, she doesn't know what failure feels like. So they kind of paid this witch to act as this abusive, um, like, teacher so Elena knows what failure is. Which is very, like, it's a very sad moment where, like, just her parents were mani manipulative. But it gave Elena some really good character development, which I like, because it's like a gifted girl. She's all successful, but when she actually goes into the real world, maybe she'll face some hardships. So it's like it's kind of a okay situation, very like underhanded, but I, I, I still I did not expect this much plot development going on. So then she graduates, the Stardust Witch is actually a nice person, and then they, they she learns magic and she gets upgraded to the Ashen Witch because she has white hair. So Elena becomes the Ashen Witch and she goes to travel on her adventures. And now in episode 2 she goes into this uh, magical town with a lot of uh, witches and witches in training. She, when she's flying she bumps into another girl. So this witch that bumps into her, her name is Saya. And she seems to be a mess like just flying all over the place breaking all these tiles. But Elena kind of is nice to her, uh, treats her injuries and just flies away. And now Elena tries to book a hotel room somewhere uh, to stay in this town, but then all the people just kick her out. They're like, no, we can't accommodate you. So yeah, we don't know why they're rejecting her. So then she finds a rundown motel that actually accepts her, and then she sees it's Saya, the same girl she bumped into as the uh, main desk lady. So yeah, her and Saya have a friendship together where Saya wants to be a witch, 
herself. But then uh, her sister kind of overtaken overtook her, so she's just lonely, and she's just trying to graduate the academy. Also, Elena loses her witch um, pendant that like explains that she's a witch. So that's why everyone is kicking her out of the hotels because she they don't think she's a real witch without that uh, badge of proof. So yeah, they start training together. Um, Sai is actually really good with magic, and Elena still can't find her badge. So then, after a bit, Elena asks the nearby neighbor if they saw the badge, and then they drop a bit of knowledge on her. So then, she realizes that this girl Saya is actually scamming her, where she pretends she's um, bad at magic, just to like have a friend in Elena since her little sister left. So it's not like a money scam or evil scam, it's just like an innocent... Um, this girl is lonely type of scam, which is, is this character development in the show is insane. Like all these characters have so many deep plot points and then Elena's trying to help them all. So yeah, Elena comforts her. Uh, they sleep in the same bed together. And then um, soon, six months later, we get a time skip six months where that girl Saya becomes a skilled witch. And yeah, Elena continues her journeys. So for Sports Climbing Girls, episode 1 and 2. Wow, so we got an anime with cute, muscular girls just doing athletic things. This just cannot go wrong. So we have Konomi as our main character. She's a purple-haired girl, and she is kind of slacking off at home. She doesn't have a club to join or anything, so she decides, Hey, today's the day I'm going to join a club. I'm going to be out there and social. So she finds all these clubs, but none of them seem to fit her style. And then she sees a rock climbing wall out in the schoolyard. So then she tries to touch it, and she gets meet, met with this mean-looking first-year girl, June. And she tells her, hey, don't you can't touch the wall unless you're part of the club. June seems to be like the gatekeeper of this rock climbing club. But then Konomi uh, practices a bit, and she falls at first, but then she keeps... Um, learning and getting better at this uh, rock climbing. So then um, two more club members show up, uh, Nonoka and Sayo. Now we have our whole cast of rock climbers. Basically, this is our main team. And then Konomi says rock climbing, yeah, it's fun, it's like a game. And then June got all mad. She's like, no, it's not a game, it's serious business. So they basically have a competition. The loser gets kicked out of the club. Konomi is uh, like a beginner. She doesn't know how to climb at all. She gets a two-minute head start. And then, yeah, Konomi's power in this rock climbing show is that she can analyze the shortest path of the wall, like some machine learning algorithm. So she can actually find the most efficient way to climb up paths. It's just that, like, since she's a little inexperienced, she doesn't know some of the techniques. We get a little bit of backstory from June where she loved to climb ever since she was a kid. And she was also really skilled at it and just takes it really seriously. <laughs> And then we get Konomi's backstory, where she's a puzzle game master. She spends all her time just playing games and in game competitions, so... I guess that's how she got her critical thinking skills. So yeah, she applies her puzzle game knowledge to actually climbing a wall like a puzzle. It's like a Candy Crush game or something. So yeah. Uh, Konomi... Konomi and June reach the end of the... Reach the end of the rock wall together. But then June beats her by like half a second. But then um, she's nice and then Konomi gets to join anyway even after losing. So yeah, we have the we have the four members of the rock climbing squad. So yeah, next episode, Konomi and her squad, the Hanyama school, they go to this rock climbing competition. And Konomi only has like two days of practice. So she's kind of inexperienced. But yeah, she has her ability to analyze the walls to her advantage. Her squad mates, Sayo and Nonoka, are really good. Nonoka is really skinny and small, but she's really flexible, which allows her to maneuver the walls. Sayo is also really, she's really smart at climbing, so she knows all the proper techniques. June is also really experienced as well. And then Konomi, she meets this cat girl, who is, seems to be a really nice climbing friend, and she gives Konomi some advice that, oh, you see that rock wall over there that you're going to? You need a jump to make it, so you need to take the specific path to jump. The other paths won't work. So she kind of sabotages her. Konomi just, instead of using her analytical brain, she just blindly listens to this cat girl. 
and fails. And uh, it's revealed we get the cat girl's backstory where she was always like number one at climbing when she was younger, but then June overtook her, and now she's not number one anymore. So she's just jealous that everyone is beating her. But then June kind of grows her, says, "Yo, how can you sabotage Konomi like this?" And then Konomi practices some moves, like she does this Egyptian rest hold where. You have your legs on the rocks so supporting your weight, so your arms can rest for a bit. And yeah, Konomi makes it higher than the cat girl. She doesn't um, succeed yet, but she's, she's getting there. So yeah, we see Konomi's growth. We also do see the spider lady who's really creepy. Her name is Chinari. And then at the end, we see like a mashup of all these um, top high school girl rock climbers. So yeah, this is a cool anime, just muscular girls. Rock climbing is a very slice of life esque, but very fun. So, for Tony Kaku Kawaii, this is a pretty interesting romantic comedy show. It starts with this dude named NASA, and he hates his name because, yeah, people compare him to NASA. Like, oh, you want to be an astronaut when you grow up? You want to do this or that? So, yeah, he gets fed up with it. So, he has a life goal where he's going to strengthen his mind and body and just become more superior than NASA so people don't compare him to NASA. So yeah, he's in middle school, and he sees this pretty girl across the street, and he wants to kind of know her name, so he aimlessly walks towards her. He gets hit by a truck in the middle of the snowfield. So a truck coon making an appearance. He doesn't get isekai though, because the girl that he was peeping, she blocked the truck. So apparently she's strong enough to be impervious to truck damage, so she might be like some supernatural being. But yeah, NASA still gets some type of injuries, like he's losing a lot of blood, but he's not killed because she protected him. And then he kind of wants to know her name, so he doesn't want to lose her. So he perseveres through his injuries, he climbs up, follows her to the bus station. And then he asks her name, he kind of wants to be her boyfriend. And she said, yeah, we can be together if we, if we get married. After his adrenaline rush, he passes out. A few years later, he turns 18, he kind of skipped high school. And he turned to service industry jobs just to have a chance to meet this uh, mysterious girl. And then one day he's at his apartment alone. The girl knocks on his door and she's there. And then they decide to get married, hooray. <laughs> so yeah, very rapid progression of story. We don't really know much about this girl. Her name is revealed to be Sukasa, and that's pretty much it. And then after, after that episode 2, they formalize the marriage. They have the paper, basically, and NASA is 18 years old and Tsukasa is 16, so she needs, like, parents' permission, and then she has her parents' permission in the slip. So yeah, they get married, they move in together, and hijinks ensue where, oh, he only has one bed, so they go bed shopping. And then after that, they're just living together as a married couple, so <laughs> we'll see how the story unfolds. It's a pretty comfy romantic comedy has a pretty original story that's just like, oh, we're getting married now, abruptly. So there might be some twists and turns. Okay, now for No Bless, episode one. This is the vampire webtoon, a pretty old webtoon, but now it's getting adapted by Crunchyroll. It features vampires in high school, which I kind of didn't expect them being in high school, but yeah, um, it's a pretty good comedy action mix where there's a vampire kind of experiment and he's a security guard for the school and then he teams up with the two school leaders it's a guy named Roy who's an old-fashioned vampire and he's doesn't really know what modern stuff is like he doesn't know what a cell phone is and then his partner in crime Frankenstein so they run the school and they're pretty cool main characters also we have some background on some villains where we see them in some third world country wreaking havoc and they look like a group of vampire boy band mercenary villains. So yeah, there's like five villains that are um, moving to Japan to inv investigate this missing vampire named Mary. And there's like two experiments that are part of her contact. And one of the experiments is the security guard for the school. Also, there's a cool fight scene where th there's a red haired guy who bumps into this girl and then his boyfriend gets jealous so he pulls up on the school grounds and then the experiment I think his name is M21 he just shows off his moves and so the first episode sets up all the story points 
setting up the characters setting and just what's gonna happen we're gonna be in high school we're gonna see this five villain group and there's experiments and vampires involved so for high q to the top season two uh, episodes one and two we continue off with karasno and inarizaki high just facing off in the second round inarizaki has the reputation of being like the second best team they have the second best offense and they're basically one of the tournament favorites but then karasno can hang with them they have their super quick attack as always but then inarizaki has some gimmicks so this is why i love this anime because they keep the volleyball fresh by adding just outside gimmicks to spice up the story so the first gimmick they have is basically they have the home court advantage where all the cheering and loud noises and clapping and orchestra just throw off all the Karasno servers and they're just like out of sync. And this disadvantage is countered by Tanaka's sister. She calls upon her traditional Japanese band squad to play drums and flutes and everything to help calm down Karasno. So yeah, that, that gimmick's evened out and now Karasno seems to be hot. The setter of Inarizaki High is really skilled. He can set up quick attacks, he can do a lot. And also they're really good offensive-wise, so they're a really strong offensive team, but they don't seem to be that great defensively. So yeah, after these two episodes, after like back and forth, we still don't have the finish to the first game. But it's pretty close in favor of Karasno. And up to bat is Yamaguchi, who has the jump, he has the float serves that are like really hard to hit, so maybe he'll get some points for the squad. So for Yasahime, this is the Inuyasha sequel, where it follows the daughters of Seshumaru, so he was the half-brother of Inuyasha. And this is pretty nostalgic since Inuyasha was one of the shows I saw dubbed on TV just randomly. I haven't seen a lot of it, and I haven't continued watching it or finished it, but it's like, it was a cool show just because the it featured the female main character, Kagomi, and just a bunch of cool adventures were had. There's a white-haired girl and a black-haired girl, and they both have like these red streaks in their hair. Their names are Toa and Setsuna. And damn, I should have finished Inuyasha before watching this because the first episode has some kind of ending continuation to the Inuyasha ending where they fight some tree monsters that are looking for these rainbow beads. So yeah, there's just some random stuff going on. But yeah, Inuyasha and the squad just go out at the first episode. The second episode seems to be more focused towards what the story is going for, which is time travel shenanigans. It starts off with Toa and Setsuna. These half-sisters just uh, chilling in a forest, and one day the forest goes on fire, so they get separated. And then Toa gets transported into the present time. And she meets Kagome's brother, which is like an adult now, and he takes care of Toa as she's like a little kid. And so now Toa, from, from the world of feudal Japan, is now like living life in the present day. She's a pretty strong woman, she gets into fights a lot. She's really spunky and has like a cool design too, like, like a white suit blazer. And then Setsuna and this girl Moroha are fighting this big snake monster. Which is, yeah, par it's par for the course for Inuyasha, these monster designs. I really like them. So then Moroha and Setsuna get their rainbow beads taken by this snake centipede monster. They somehow go through a portal back to normal Japan, present day Japan. And then they meet up with Toa, the white haired girl. So now all three of these girls are together in modern day Japan, and this big centipede monster is also there. So the story is pretty unique, spanning across uh, both worlds, and we'll see how all these girls interact with each other next episode. So for Don Machi Season 3, yeah, we're back. Belle is here, and he rescues another girl. She's this monster girl, and she's kind of like a half-dragon hybrid. Her race is called the Vivre. And she's a monster with intelligence that Belle just kind of happens across in the dungeons. And this is kind of unheard of because all monsters are just mindless crazy. But these have actual intelligence and can talk. So he rescues her and introduces her to the Familia. She gets attached to Belle and she's like this little sister type of character. We get, we get a name for her. Her name is Wiene. 
Ananya. This is another new girl in the familia. Wine scratches Bell, but it's alright because, like, Bell's a good guy. So he has, like, this big gash on his arm because Wine has these big dragon claws, but then they cut off her claws and pedicure her so she looks like a normal person now. They um, gather info on who else like is after these types of monsters, so it's information on these monsters. And then we see that it's uh, Hermes and the Ikelos Familia. So we get a new Familia name, and they seem to be maybe the villains of this season. And then, yeah, next episode, the dragon girl hears the supporter, Lily, talk shit about her, so she kind of gets sad and runs away. Yeah, because she realizes, oh, people don't like me, I'm unneeded. I'm, uh, I'm unnatural. <laughs> and then she rescues a girl in the middle of the street while she's running away. But then her wings show. She has these big dragon wings. And everyone thinks she's a monster. So yeah, she's just, it's like an emotional moment for her. But yeah, the squad is getting more information on these types of monsters with intelligence that appear to be popping up in the dungeon. So yeah, this season is okay so far. I mean, it's more Don Machi, so... It, it has the same formula. Aisha also makes an appearance too, so if you like the um, the Ishtar familiar girls, yeah, they're, they're still here. So the waifus are still here. And the story is uh, about the same. So we'll see how Vel <laughs> progresses with his harem. Okay, so for our last crusade, or the rise of a new world, this is kind of like a random fantasy anime that... Basically, it's like a Romeo and Juliet story where there's a magic nation of witches and a nation of advanced technology where they're just fighting a war and they're enemies for some random reason. And then one dude from the Empire is tasked to capture this witch. But then they have some hijinks moment where the witch trips on a cliff and the, and the guy catches her. So yeah, starting from that, they have a awkward, forbidden relationship. It'll probably progress throughout the season. This is a standard fantasy show. It has the waifus, it has the magic. It has that cool black haired main character. So if you want to watch another one of these fantasy shows, it's not an isekai, but it's just fantasy, and then, then you can. I probably might drop this. And now for the irregular at Magic High School, the visitor arc. This is a new arc featuring this girl from America who, who comes through as a spy to <laughs> spy on Japan. But she's not really a good spy because everyone kind of calls her out on it. But yeah, she joins the squad. Her name is uh, Lena, or uh, Angelina for sh uh, shortened. And yeah, uh, the first episode was just introducing Angelina and reintroducing the same characters. And then the second episode was introducing these vampire type of enemies that they kind of look like Rorschach from Watchmen and then they suck the blood of people like they don't they don't kill anyone they just take like maybe 10% of their blood and and any yeah, other pretty powerful 